Hey everybody, this is Sean Smith and welcome to video number three, video number three of our Fearless Speaking for Direct Sales series. And this video is gonna be about the physicality of speaking. And in my opinion, my experience, this is probably the missing link for most people because as we've talked about in the other videos, speaking is such a head game for so many people. That's where the fears are created. People are concerned about their intellectual judgments from the crowd. They're concerned about forgetting their words. All those things are coming from your head. So one of the worst places you can be, or the worst place you can be when you're speaking, is in your head. When you're in your body, then you're not as connected to your head, which is where all the fears lie. So one of the best ways to overcome your fears, or at least to avoid them when you're speaking, is to become more physical and be more connected to your body. And this isn't anything that most people think about. It's not what we're trained on generally when we think of how to be a good speaker. We're taught the rules, right? Say this, don't say this, move this way, don't move that way. But there are no rules when it comes to speaking. It all depends on what your purpose is. So sometimes my coaching to somebody as it relates to their speaking is to be bigger with your hands and sometimes it's to be smaller with your hands. Sometimes it's to move around and sometimes it's be still. Sometimes it's talk louder and sometimes it's talk lower. And it all depends on what the purpose is for the audience, what you want the experience to be. So I don't want you to think that there are a set of rules that you have to live by. In fact, I want you to throw all those rules away and every talk you give Regardless of the situation, whether there's tons of people in the audience or it's just one-on-one, -on -one, I want you to be really clear on what your purpose is and then make all of your choices according to your purpose, according to where you want them to end up after this interaction with you. Whether that's emotionally, physically, what you want them to be thinking of or whatever, that should determine everything that you do in any of your talks. So in this video, we're going to talk about two components of physicality. Number one, the negative side of it, how fears are created in our physical body. And then number two, the solution in a physical way, you know, the physical solution to most of our fears. So the physicality of speaking, I want you to understand how fear manifests itself into our body. And it's really going to be determined by the labels that you give the physical sensations that you have. So if you understand that anxiety and excitement and fear, you know, it, from a physical sensation standpoint, they feel almost identical in the body. We might have butterflies, we might get goosebumps, we might find, you know, might feel a little fidgety, our breathing might get a little bit more shallow. Those are all characteristics of either kind of emotion. So your experience of those sensations are going to largely, is going to largely be determined by how you label it. If you have the butterflies in your stomach and you go, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous, then your mind goes, uh oh, what do we have to be nervous about? And it starts scanning the environment and making things up about what you could be nervous about. What if they don't like it? What if I try to tell a joke and it bombs? What if I forget my words? What if they hate me, right? Whatever the, the answers are, are going to create the experience of failure. And it's like your mind is scaring you, but it's because you fed it a label that caused it to say, what do we have to be nervous about or afraid about or whatever the negative label is. But what if you took that same sensation and said, wow, this feels like excitement. Then your mind will go, really? Excitement? What do we have to be excited about? And it'll scan the environment and make up scenarios about what it could be excited about. So maybe the answers are, what if somebody joins my business? What if they love what I say? What if I have a great time? What if I change somebody's life today in this 15 minute talk or one hour talk or whatever it is? And so then your mind will create the positive experience simply because you labeled it differently. Now you might think it can't be this simple, but trust me, a large part of this is really truly that simple. So I want you to intentionally create the labels that match the experience you want to have. That's one way to sort of disarm or avoid, you know, to disarm those fears and to avoid the negative experiences. If you create 
these negative experiences for yourself, you'll probably get a sense of awkwardness and understand that that awkwardness is contagious. Whatever you are feeling as a speaker, your audience will probably feel also. And a lot of times the audiences don't feel any negativity until the speaker presences that negativity. So the speaker will go, oh my goodness, I'm so nervous tonight, or that was really hard to follow that person if you're following somebody else, or you, you physically show the symptoms of nervousness, and that gets translated, transferred rather, to the audience. And then they start feeling jittery and nervous or tight or whatever they're seeing in you, and that's not going to put them in the right space to hear whatever it is they're gonna share with them, right? So you've got to manage your own energy because it's going to get transferred to your audience. Now, this concept right here is actually something that I hadn't thought of until we were sort of dissecting how these physical fears show up earlier today. And what happens is if you label your sensations negative and you start telling yourself that there are things to be afraid of, then your physical body will go into protection mode. Your physical body will literally start protecting you as though it's going to get attacked, right? And if you know you're going to get attacked, you're going to guard yourself. You're gonna to try to protect yourself by putting up some sort of guard, right? So you can fend off whatever the attack is. And energetically, that's what's happening when your body is creating or responding to all of the fears that your mind is creating, right? So your mind creates the fears based on the labels, answers the questions as I was talking about earlier, and then your body reacts to it. That's why people get tense. That's why people start to get tunnel vision. That's why people start to lose focus. It's because their body is literally, energetically, and neurologically, at the cellular level, your body is trying to protect yourself. And when you're in that protection mode, you're tense, you're tight, you don't have access to your brilliance, you don't have access to this energetic flow, you don't have access to your confidence, and it makes everything turn out worse because you're sitting in this place of protection. And when you're protecting like this, you're disconnecting yourself from everybody else. Disconnects from people. So as you're protecting, then you're disconnecting from the audience. And what that's actually doing is on an energetic level, you're basically telling yourself and you're acting as though the audience is the bad guy. I have to protect myself from you guys. I have to protect myself from your, from your judgments, from your energy, from you not laughing at my jokes, from whatever it is that you're throwing at me. I have to protect myself from you, which means you're bad. And now we've got this adversarial relationship, right? Like we're like we're fighting against each other. Now, of course, none of this is conscious. It's not gonna be really noticeable at a, at a conscious level, but it'll be felt at an unconscious level, this, this kind of disconnect. So you've gotta be present, you've gotta be transparent. A lot of things I've already talked about in this series, and in this case, label your physical sensation something positive so you don't create the disconnect with your audience, right? Now the solution to all of this is actually quite simple. It's to move, right? As I said in the beginning, the more that you are connected and inside your body, connected to your body and inside your body, the more that your focus is going to be on movement and everything that you're doing with your hands, with your legs, with your, you know, your upper body, your, your voice, your head, everything. And then it's going to be harder for you to stay connected to the fears that are going on in your logical mind, right? Because we can really only focus on one thing at a time. So when you're focused on, let me just tell you this one piece because the first one will make it make sense. When you're focused on moving with intention, when you're focused on going forward or backward or, or to the side or using your hands or using your tonality, when you're focused on movement with intention, it gives your brain something to look at, something to pay attention to. And if you're paying attention to this movement that you're doing, then you're not paying attention, or at least it's harder to pay attention to the fears 
that are going on in your head, right? Because there's a narrative in your head and one of the ways to avoid that, it's, it's like changing the channel on a TV. It doesn't mean that these are necessarily going to stop like that, but it means you're just going to pay attention to something else. And your body is a great thing to pay attention to because it, it just makes you more present and it moves the energy around which allows you to be more connected to yourself, to, to your emotions, to your audience, all the things we've been talking about. The movements though must be congruent. That's why I want you to move with intention. What a lot of speakers do, no matter what the context is, is they move in opposition to their message, right? So a lot of speakers will show up and they'll announce themselves. They'll be like, hey everybody, I'm Sean Smith. And they'll walk backwards when they're announcing themselves or they'll walk backwards in, when they're giving a message that they really want to land in the audience. So let's say you, you're given a message about how you can really change your life. You can't be walking backwards and go, now you could really change your life because you're taking away energetically and physically what you're saying. So a simple rule of thumb is anything that you want to land in a positive way in the audience's lap or in their hearts, move in toward them so that it will land. And anything that you don't want to land, move away from them. So when you're talking about fears or you're talking about maybe a time in your life when you, know, you retreated from all the obstacles that were, that were going on, that's when you want to physically demonstrate what you are showing them or physically supplement or complement what it is that you're showing them, right? So again, anything you want to land positively, step into them. Anything you want to land negatively or you don't want to land at all, step away. Never point into the audience. That's a negative trigger for a lot of people. Um, only point and, and create connections positively into your audience. Your audience is a sacred, I want you to think of it as, as like a sacred being, a sacred single being that you're having this, this exchange with, right? And be aware of the sacredness of that and be aware of what you can do physically to either take away or add to whatever your words are, right? So there's so many different examples. I don't have time in this video to go through all the different examples, but if you're intentional about it and you just ask yourself, you know, you tap into your own common sense, what physical movement would make sense here in this particular message? then I think you'll, you know, you'll be able to come up with the answers um, better. So just be more congruent. When you're talking about exciting things, you're talking about goals, you're talking about dreams, you, know, be, you gotta be animated, you gotta be speaking louder, you gotta be a little bit more, uh, you gotta be more animated with your hands, you gotta be more animated with your body, you gotta be you know, maybe moving left and right a little bit, you gotta be looking up a little bit more because that's where most of us think about our dreams, right? So that's congruent to talking to somebody about their dreams. But that's not congruent if you're talking to people about their fears and you're saying, you know, I used to have this big fear of failure and now I have this, this, uh, this fear of success actually and you got a big smile on your face when you're talking about fears. That's incongruent. And energetically, it actually causes people to not trust you when your movements don't match with your message, right? So always make sure they're congruent so that people can relate to you, but most importantly, they'll, they'll trust you. The next piece here is to become your message. One of the things a lot of people do is they practice and practice and practice so they can memorize their talk. And I don't want you to ever memorize your talk because the words that come out of your mouth aren't all that important anyway, right? I'm sure you've heard study after study show that the words only account for like 7% of communication. It's your tonality, it's your body movements, everything else, the nonverbal communication is what actually delivers the majority of the message. So I don't want you to, to practice memorizing and then show up to regurgitate some message as though the words are most important. I want you to become your message, to become energetically whatever it is that you want them to experience. When you tell stories, become the story. When you, even if you give content about how people can change their lives or about a product or a service, you can still become the energy 
of that message. And if you become the energy of that message, that's what's going to transfer to the audience more anyway. And then whatever you say means less. Now that doesn't mean that there aren't certain things that you really want to nail from a linguistic standpoint and that's fine, but now you only have to remember a few things that are really important to word a certain way and then everything else you can let go and be more flexible because you've become the message, right? And I really learned this during the speaking competition. I think I referred to it in, in one of the other videos. I was on stage during a speaking competition and we only had six minutes to give this talk, right? It was in the finals and I had practiced for a couple days, but I practiced to become my talk. And when I was on stage actually doing the presentation, I thought I was only two minutes into, the, into my time, but I was actually three minutes into my time. And that's a huge discrepancy. If, if I'm already an, a minute late, or a minute you know, slower in a six minute talk, that's tough. But because I had become my message, I was actually able to edit the message in my mind without worrying about the words that were going to come out. And I don't know if I can articulate it as, as, as well and have you understand how cool that was for me to just be able to go, okay, I've only got three minutes to deliver four minutes of a talk. I'm gonna take that out and that out and that out and that out. But it wasn't an intellectual exercise it was more of an energetic exercise and then I was able to finish on time because I was the message. I wasn't trying to memorize the words of a message. Now that doesn't mean that that only works when you're in a speaking competition. It works all the time because these are components of captivation. It doesn't matter whether we're, you know, whether you're working your direct sales business or you're doing leadership training or even just talking to friends and family. These components or, or these, uh, these concepts are gonna work in any form of communication, right? Now, this is a really interesting one. I want you to master the art of silence. And I say it's interesting because most people are afraid of the silence. They're afraid of experiencing the silence and they're afraid of what they think the audience is thinking when they are silent. And I think that at the core of that, it's because most of us have a fear of looking stupid, being embarrassed, not being perceived as intelligent, etc. And so we hate the, the, the silent space. But there's actually a study done not too long ago, I remember reading, that said when a speaker is silent, the audience actually perceives that speaker to be more intelligent. And the longer the silence is, the more intelligent the audience perceives the speaker to be. Now, I would add on to that and say, you got to make sure that your energy is stable and you've got certainty and your silence has a purpose in it because you can be silent and just, you know, be moving around and fidgeting and stuff like that. And then it's not going to have the same effect, but silence itself is not negative. In fact, it's very positive when you want something to, to really land with people. One of the best ways to do it is to be silent after you say it or when you want to build up a little bit of anticipation, right? Like somebody's waiting for the punchline, right? One of the best ways to do it is to be silent before you deliver whatever it is that you're going to deliver. And it, it's not, it's obviously easy to stay silent from a physical standpoint. It's scary emotionally for most people, but when you can really master that art of silence, you'll be amazed at how powerful your words can be when nothing is coming out of your body. So be, be clear, be loud with your silence. That's the key. Be loud with your silence. Two more things here. Tonality controls the mood. Tonality is the way the words are coming out of your mouth. Are you talking really loud? Are you speaking really soft? Are you speaking really fast? Are you speaking really slow? Our human spirit is so connected to our auditory senses that mixing up your tonality is probably the quickest way to alter somebody's mood. It's just like people can't avoid, they, they, they can't resist their mood being dictated by the way somebody's talking. 
So again, with congruency and intention, use the words, use your tonality, your, your volume, how high and how low you speak, your uh, speed, how fast and how slow you speak, and just your rhythm, just everything, you know, become a master of using your, your voice as an instrument and you'll be amazed at how powerful that can be for the audience, right? How you can really determine their experience of your interaction by altering your tonality with intention. And then the final thing here is opposition. This is another thing that I've learned just recently as I started to really study the art of speaking on stage over the last couple of years, the power of opposition. And what I mean by that is if you really want to captivate the human heart, you want to touch them at both ends of the spectrum. So you want to be able to get somebody to cry and make them laugh. If you can get them to cry and make them laugh, then you've touched both ends of the spectrum. And the closer that those two things happen to each other, the more captivating it is. So if you can have them crying and then laughing a few seconds later, now you've taken them on this journey in incredibly fast and they are just wide open to you. Energetically, they are wide open to you. And that's when you can, you can really control from a very nurturing and loving place, you can control their state, their state of mind, their state of emotion when you've got them opened up and all forms of opposition. So moving around and then just immediately getting still is also visual opposition, right? Going to the left and then coming back to the right, that's opposition. Being really big with your hands, you know, up high, and then being low with your hands and, and more subdued, that's opposition. Talking fast and talking slow, right? Or talking loud and talking silent you know, silently lower. All of those things are opposition and I want you to practice adding these oppositional elements into all forms of your communication. Because the more that you can open people up, the more that you can grab their heart and really take them wherever you want to go. So this isn't an element of speaking that in my experience is taught all that often. And I promise you it'll be such a game changer for your personal experience. But more importantly than that, it'll be a game changer for their experience of you as a speaker and as a communicator. So as always, I'd love to hear your feedback on this page. Leave a comment or ask a question. We'll do our very best to engage. And I'll be coming to you very soon with video number four in this fearless speaking for direct sales video training. Take care, everyone. I'll talk to you soon.